Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, it's been too long. We have Max Teitelbaum. Max is COO and co-founder of What Runs Where, which is a competitive intelligence platform for buying ads online. They help you keep track of your competition, spy on top performing campaigns, and see what's working. Max also teaches at Baylor University Center for Entrepreneurship and mentors other startups through Grow Labs. Max, thanks for joining me. Thanks so much for having me, Jeremy. So, you know, Max, since it's Inspired Insider, I asked the question about tell me your lowest point and then how you push through. Because it's, I mean, you've had tremendous growth, but it's not always that easy. I think. Personally, the lowest point was at the end of my first business. I mean, um, you know, I was there. I was making a fair amount of money, but I hated my life. I didn't like what I was doing. I didn't like it. You know, I didn't like getting up and going to work. I was I was completely burnt out. I needed a break. You know, I had been working since I was 15. I was, you know, and to be able to say, hey, I'm I'm, you know, 20 and um, or at that time, 19 and um, you're already burnt out. Yeah, already burnt out is a, is a really depressing statement, but it's true. You know, I was waking up every two hours. I wasn't sleeping well any nights. You know, at some point, you need to take a step back and get that balance in your life. I had I gained about forty five pounds over the past year because wow. I wasn't exercising. I was just you know sitting there working, and you know there was there was no work life balance. I wasn't very healthy. Mm-hmm. So how did you get over that? Started exercising. I mean, that burnout. I mean, no, no, I know. I made, I made a joke. How did I get over it? I took time off. Um, I took a step back and, you know, took a couple months off and really cleared my head and got a fresh perspective and Mm -hmm. realized, you know, what, what I needed to do. And I think that's a lot where a lot of the way that I learned about, you know, the need for balance. You know, I'm a very um, intense person. If I'm, you know, passionate about something I'll do it until it's done right so could I still work 20 hours a day seven days a week absolutely um my girlfriend would probably hate me but um you wouldn't have a girlfriend I wouldn't have a girl exactly but um (laughs) but I don't think that's the most that I don't think that's the way to be the most productive I mean you say you took time off kind of nonchalantly but when you're working that hard and well, I think I think the key you, there yeah. is not just nonchalant. It's I we took a business that was profitable. There it was still making money and shut it down. Right, that's hard to do. So it's walking away from a decent amount of money. I agree. And, it's hard to do. Yeah. You know, it's, it sort of comes. It comes with that realization that you know, you can. I'm just not happy. Right. Yeah. So I'm unhealthy. I'm not happy, and something needs to change, and something needs right. to give, and. At that point, I'm still young. Uh, you know, I can always make money later, but let's let's fix. Yeah. You know, what's up here? Was there a last straw? Because that probably had been going on for a while. I don't think it's. A, I no, no. I just think it's sort of like slow. It was slow, like slow, continual pressure building over time that just sort of Couldn't take came it. to came yeah. to head. And one morning, you know, you know, you wake up and you say, you know, cool. This is this is know. it. Yeah. So on the flip side, Max, what's been one of the proudest moments? I think one of our proudest moments is I think I have a new proud moment every day I wake up these days and I come to work and I see people sitting in our offices working hard and every time that we add a new team member to our team and a new customer to our product I think is a new most proud moment. Yeah. What's one where you um, celebrated one of the successes in the company? I think I think one of the you know things that popped out of my mind is one one of the first trade shows we went to after about a year and a half and People were saying, oh, you're that, you're the guy from what runs where, you know, oh, we love your product and we use it and we use it every day and we love it. And hearing people that I've never met before, you know, sort of recognize you not not because of who you are, but, you know, where you work for and because they truly love the product is an extraordinary rewarding thing. That, that means mm-hmm. more than anything to me. Yeah. Do you remember any, if you can talk about it, I don't know if you can, any particular customer that you thought, wow this person is using our the service I created or this company is using the service? I mean, I think 
very early on, one of our first customers was a bank here in Canada called Scotia Bank, which is one of the five largest banks in Canada, and they've been a customer of ours since very, very early. And I think that was, you know, a sort of a pivotal point because you have a very large multi-billion dollar company saying, hey, we trust your product to, to at least help us guide um, guide our decision making process in some way. And, um, you know, that gives you the confidence to go after other com very large companies. And I think, you know, I think a lot of people that start, start companies don't realize that um, you can go and you can, you know, if you have a great product, everybody should be using it. You just have to have the confidence to find the right person and knock on the right door. Mm -hmm. So who are your mentors? And I want to hear some of the good advice they've given you. My mentors. Well, we have a fantastic board of advisors, and, and I feel like each one of those people are my are my mentors. Mm -hmm. um, we have board meetings where we sit down and we bounce ideas off them, and they help us with you know decisions. And I feel like my father is an extraordinary mentor, extraordinary mentor for myself. And um, my late grandmother was also you know a phenomenal mentor for me. my grandparents founded a very successful clothing business in London, Ontario, and then um, sold that business. And although it's a completely different business, they were a very early version of, you know, a dollar store, buy in bulk, sell cheaply. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there, there are certain learnings that transfer across businesses, right? Mm -hmm. So really there is about, you know, less so about how do you approach specific problems, but how should you think about problems mm -hmm. and just, you know, being able to converse with those people and, re and understand how they think and then see, see, can I take pieces of that and apply it to my business? So what great advice has your dad given you throughout your year? My dad given me? Yeah. I mean, I talk to my dad. My dad gives me lots of good life. I have a very healthy relationship with my father. Um, I think the best advice my father's ever given me is never think that you're the smartest person in the room. Mm -hmm. You should always assume that there's somebody smarter than you in that room. Mm -hmm. And I apply that to any room I walk into. Um, because if you don't, if you assume you're not the smartest person in the room, there's always something you can learn from that other person or somebody else in that room. And you know, you should go seek that out and figure out what that is. Mm -hmm. And you'll, you never know, you know, who somebody can be and where that can lead you. Right. Yeah, for sure. Um, and the same way you should give back to others because you never know where that person will end up. Or, you know, when you talk about talking to new entrepreneurs and new men and doing some mentorship myself, you know, you never know how successful somebody's going to be. Or, you know, could, could I be talking to the next, you know, Bill Gates or, right. or Mark Zuckerberg or, you know, Elon Musk right now. And, you know, in 20 years, look back and say, wow, that's that. that that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, you just don't know. What about your board advisors? What's some good advice that you remember? Our board really helps us on day to day and technical operations of the business. Yeah. So there, and I can't talk about a lot of it, but it's about you know if yeah, we have generally, a yeah, generally. if we have a person, if we have a personnel problem or if we have a challenge, a lot of them have seen it in their businesses, right? And they they've all been very successful. So how have they tackled it? And how can we take what they you know sort of in the same way that Wharton's where helps you understand what other advertisers have done and where they've tested? How can we take other people's experiences and make sure we don't make the same mistakes there? How often do you have the board meetings? Once a quarter. Once a quarter. Yeah. yeah. And so what have you found works with the format of the board meetings so you get the most out of it? Because I'm sure you have sure, busy well, board members. <laughs> Yeah, we do, and we prepare an entire agenda, and we have sort of an, an update. Um, here are things that are going well. Here are problems, and here are things that we need. Here are discussion points we need advice on. We have everybody into our office. We cater the meeting, and we have um, either my partner or myself lead the meeting, and then our board members sort of chime in with questions. Then we send out a recap mm -hmm. after that, and usually we find a number of sort of takeaways and action points that we need to do from there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you can't talk about specific instance advice from the board members, what's a general piece of advice that sticks with you from one of the board members? I the, think it guides you. Know, your I'm, 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 you know, and I've got less emotional as I've got older, but being, you know, still a fairly young entrepreneur, I get, you know, emotional about things. You know, uh, the business is still my partner, my baby, and you know, you want to protect your, your child. So yeah. I think it's just being able to take, you know, yourself out of it, take the ego out of it, make the right decision for the business and not let your emotions. It's hard to do, though. Um, 
grow yourself. It's extraordinarily hard to, but sometimes you need that person to give you and say, you know, hey, just calm down a second, look at it. It's not as bad or, you know, take a second and, and you know, make the right decision. Yeah. yeah. So tell me, you know, Max, what are some of the good pieces of advice you've given? Because I know you teach entrepreneurship and uh, what you try and instill on the, the people you're, you're mentoring. Sure. I think with any entrepreneur, you need to find um, a product market fit. So I'm bare, you know, I'm a huge proponent of just getting a prototype out and just building it and then finding customers. I think when you're starting something, people will be a lot more lenient with you um, and they don't expect your product to be perfect. So mm -hmm. don't sit there and just think I'm going to build the perfect product, build something, get out there, prove park, product market fit um, quickly and then iterate from there versus sitting there and building this grandiose product that then ends up, you know, being used by nobody. And if, you know, I think the other reason, the other thing that's important is to understand if people think your idea is a bad one, why do they think your idea is a bad idea? And what can you learn from that? You know, I had um, a friend of mine when we started work on where come and sit down and say, Max, you know, stop this, come work for me. You know, you'll never make a penny doing this. This is a terrible idea and literally you know we already had customers and all of this kind of stuff and i said you know i don't i don't agree but why do you think so and he gave me his sort of feedback and um well most of it was i think misguided there were specific points about you know um certain customer segments we go after mm -hmm. and um, a bit more volatility there and then you know it's how to figure out how to mitigate that that risk. Mm -hmm. So yeah. being able, you know, I think it's important to sort of seek out people that think you'll fail. Yeah. You know, if again, you don't want just yes men. You want them, yeah. You want them picking apart your business in a sense, right? Exactly, because it builds you. You build a stronger business. Mm -hmm. What are some of the common questions you get that you think other you know young entrepreneurs should know? I think. The most common, you know, question I get is people ask me, you know, do you think this is a good idea, mm -hmm. right? And in the same way, and I'll give very, very honest feedback, but it's not that question is how it's phrased. Like people are looking to somebody else for validation on their idea. Mm -hmm. I think that if you're building something, you need to be extraordinarily passionate and confident in your idea mm -hmm. and, and your product. I mean, there's nothing I love more in the world than online advertising and online advertising intelligence. Mm -hmm. It's my passion. Um, and, and you tell them use what runs where and find out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think I think I think you have to be passionate about what you want to do, right? Yeah. And um, in the same way that you have to listen to that feedback and take other people's criticism. You can't go in there saying, you know, I'm vulnerable and weak and I don't believe in what I'm doing. Just please tell me I'm on the right path. You have to think I'm on the right path. Right. And, you know, can I can I build you know, something better with your feedback? But at the end of the day, this is where I want to go. Yeah. I mean, it kind of goes back to what you said earlier, which is, you know, it doesn't matter. You just have to get customers and see what they say and change it accordingly. Yeah. I mean, the example I like to point out, you know, is Noah Kagan and, you know, um, Noah has this whole thing where you know make a business or whatever. He he sold a thousand dollars of you know beef jerky, and with a you know quote unquote beef jerky business, you know beef jerky subscription business, and you know I guarantee you people would have, would say that's a terrible idea. But he went out, he got sales, he proved a model, and you know there's there's that sort of nucleus that you can then build around, and then you have to be you know not afraid to pivot and change and be you know reactive right mm -hmm. yeah